let's, let's get into tonight's lesson. We're going to talk about what happens when a believer does not renew his mind to the word of God. Hallelujah. Of course, we want, we want to renew our minds, don't we? Amen. All right. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Amen. Talking about Romans 8 and 1. Talking about the, the, the consequences of not renewing your mind to the word of God. Now, Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, I had a big discussion with somebody recently about how that, you know, who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit is not in verse 1 that was added by the translators or it wasn't in the original Greek. Most all Bible scholars agree, yada, 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 yada. But you read verse 4, it's there. They say they took it from verse 4 and stuck it up in verse 1. Uh, the big discrepancy comes in which Greek text you're using. We use the majority text and the minority text. Majority text, which, is, which the King James is based on, has it in verse 1. The minority text has it in verse, does not have it in verse 1. The Greek is called, these translations are called the majority and the minority for a reason. Yeah, I started to say. The one that's called majority text agrees with the oldest translations and so forth. The majority. The minority agrees with it the least. Right. The majority agrees somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 to 95 percent with the oldest translation. You understand that the Greek manuscripts we have now are not the oldest Greek, the original Greek manuscripts that were written. We have translations older than our oldest Greek trans, uh, uh, manuscripts. Okay. So we got, we, got, we got translations that are older than the Greek manuscripts we have. All right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. You go back and say, this gets all into the history and everything, but the thing, about the matter, the fact of the matter is, the Dead Sea Scrolls and stuff bear out a lot of a lot of these things. Um, the older manuscripts or, or or translations are validated in the majority text. They're in agreement ninety to ninety five percent of the time, whereas the minority of text has uh, agreement in substantially less places. There's a lot of disagreement between the two, um, and so that's why you got the majority and the minority. Real simple. King James is based on the majority. About 1860 something, uh, it became the uh, the intelligentsia, academia thing in the uh, ecclesiastical world to accept the minority text, which is when the revised version came out. Ninety percent of all your modern translations are based on the revised version. They actually, use the revised version as their basis, along with the minority text, to do the translations. That's about little Bible lesson there. So. What you end up with is, you say, well, all Greek scholars agree. Well, they agree on the minority text, but the majority text, if you'll put, if you, you just sit on the internet, if you put, there's a lot of scriptures you put side by side out of the majority of the minority, and, even, and a lot of the minority texts will deny the deity of Jesus. Hmm. So you have to, you have to be very careful about, you know, what text you're using and that kind of stuff, and say all Greek scholars agree. Well, they don't agree. You know, for 15, 1900 years, they agreed on the majority, and now they all of a sudden, it's the minority. So... Um, I said all that because people come along and say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you took, but you can read all four verses. They're all in reference one to the other, all connected to one to another. So it doesn't matter if it's in verse 1 or verse 4. It's still the same thing. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I am telling you, if you walk after the flesh, you will walk in condemnation. God will not condemn you. Your own heart will condemn you. First John says, the blood of our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Your own heart will bring condemnation about the fact that you're out of God's will and out of God's plan and walking in rebellion to God's laws and God's word. Period. Well, there's only one law. There ain't no other law but the law of love. I beg to differ. It is the, it is the highest law. And all the other laws are based on the law of love. But I am telling you, even Paul wrote and said that the first commandment was to obey your parents and the Lord and because it's the first commandment with promise. That's a law. So let's not get, you know, people get weirded out. They take, they take segments of scripture, take them out of their setting, and then go build whole doctrines on them, and they get into error. There is no condemnation to those. You can't walk around be, be fornicating and go, there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. I'm under grace. It don't matter. It does matter. Yeah. It does matter <clears throat> what you do with your body. Paul writes this two chapters before this and says, don't you know to whomever you yield your body to be servants to, that's who your master is? Now, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. 
you become servants of that, whoever you yield your members to. That's what you be, whether it's sin unto death or unrighteousness uh, unto, uh, unto life. So it does matter what you do with your body. See, so, he, I mean, he said right back in verse, uh, chapter 6, talks about, you know, yielding your members as unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead. So we could, we could go on with this forever, but the fact is there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When you do not renew your mind to the word of God, now what, what did uh, Joshua 1, 8 say? Joshua 1, 8 says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, how often? Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Notice he said, look, look over it. I, I'm quoting it, but you ought to be looking at it. I'm sorry. My mistake. So I got Marvin Gaye's song, My Mistake. <laughs> How many remember that song by Marvin Gaye? Somebody, I forgot who the song, girl he was with that song. Huh? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Why? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. Now stop and think about that for a minute. Joshua says, the word of God says in Joshua, that we are to, do, we are to meditate in the word of God day and night that we may observe to do. What? Everything that's written therein. We are, we are, we are observing to do everything that's written therein. But notice what happens when you observe to do everything that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Or my margin says do wisely. Other translations say deal wisely in the affairs of life. There is no condemnation to those who are Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. If you don't renew your mind to the word of God. You don't meditate in the word of God. You yield to the flesh. When you yield to the flesh, you walk in condemnation. The person who does not renew their mind to the word of God will walk in condemnation because they won't observe to do according to what's written in the word. How many of you ever, ever heard people go, well, I just think God, you know, God loves the homosexual and he made them that way and he thinks it's okay. Well, yeah, but the Bible says, well, I just, well, you know, I just, I just think. It's just my, you know, my, my feeling is, well, well, because our mind's not renewed to what the word says. Yeah. All right. Yet their heart would condemn them. The reason homosexuals live in such blatant anger is because their heart condemns them all the time. You know, they lash out at Christians because we simply, by the light that's in us, remind them of the darkness they're walking in. And their own heart condemns them. You don't have to, all you got to do is say you're a Christian, and all you got to do is say, you know what, I love you, but I, I believe homosexuality is wrong. You're a hate monger, you're a homophobe, you're this, you're that. You're trying to keep people from enjoying their life. I mean, they go thermal nuclear meltdown. It's just the light exposed in the darkness. It's all it is. And all it is is because their mind not, mind's not renewed to the word of God. They're not observing to do according to what's written therein. Then because they're living in sin, their heart condemns them. So the person who does not renew their mind to the word of God will not walk in the light. Was well, the psalmist said, the interest of thy word giveth light. He giveth understanding to the simple. In Psalm 119. He says, the interest of thy word giveth light. Don't remember where it is, Psalm 119, one something. <laughs> Maybe 121, let's see. So everybody, everybody pick a number. <laughs> Put it out there on the, uh, the little spinning wheel thing. <laughs> Guess the scripture. It's neither one of them. <laughs> 159? 130. 130, the interest of that word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. The interest of his word gives light. When you don't walk in the light, you walk in darkness. When you walk in darkness, you walk in sin. When you walk in sin, your heart condemns you. Renewing your mind to the word of God brings the light of God's word to bear so you can observe to do according to all that's written therein. It's important to renew your mind to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, next... Um, the believer does not renew his mind to the word of God, will, will live in security. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. This is kind of a backdoor way of, of uh, kind of locating people. Hebrews chapter 4. I really like this Bible, but it's, it's, uh, it was poorly made. Cambridge did a very poor job on these. Hallelujah. 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. A person whose minds are not renewed to the word of God will not come to the throne of grace. Why? They don't know that they can. They don't believe they're welcome there. They'll be, they'll be in condemnation because of, the, because of how they've lived. And so they have an insecurity. They'll, they'll, they'll hide from God. You ever seen Christians who are backslidden? And the only reason they're backslidden is they, did, they felt like they displeased God and they couldn't come to him. They felt like they couldn't come before his presence. They felt like they were banished from his presence. You know, They felt like Moses in the Ten Commandments, let the name of Moses be stricken from every record. And boom, so let it be written, so let it be done. They feel like Moses. They've been stricken. You know? Their name, his name shall not be spoken ever again. So let it be written, so let it be done. Hallelujah. Well, a lot of times when Christians get into sin or failure or miss the mark, they don't come to the throne of grace because they have not renewed the mind to the word of God, that God's grace is available to them if they will. They live in condemnation. They live, then they get into insecurity. They, they, they're insecure about their status or their position before the Father. Um, I remember a number of years ago, when actually when I was about, let's see how old I was, seven, eight, I was about eight, and we had moved to Florida. Our family moved to West Palm Beach, Florida. And um, down in Florida at that time, they, they built a lot of what they call Florida houses. And they were one-story um, cinder block houses covered in stucco with, with what they call terrazzo floors, which was a concrete base with rock in it and polished with a, with a polished finish on it. Really cool floors for, skit, for a sock <laughs> or rug riding on. Just going to tell you. We used to put scatter rugs at the end of the hall, at one end of the hall, take a run, and run from the other bedroom, run down the hall, jump on the scatter rug, slide to the other bed, jump off and do flips. <laughs> that was great. Uh, only, only, we were told not to do it. So his mom and daddy went down the street to see the Brookses, which was three houses down on the right. Joe and Lily, we, uh, <laughs> me and my little brother, hopped on the scatter rugs got after it. Except about the second time I did it, I flipped over my heel, went right into the sheetrock wall. Oh. Put a big old hole right in the wall. I remember there's a great big old hole like that. Now if I know then what I know now about how easy it is to pack sheetrock, I wouldn't be too uptight, but I was uptight. So, and my brother, older brother came and said, I'm going to tell mama. I'm, he jumped out the house, ran down the street, hauling back out, I'm going to tell mom and daddy. I'm going to tell mom and daddy. They came in, me and my little brother were in the, uh, had gotten into the living room. We were sitting down. We, he had the Bible upside down. We were praying, Jesus, heal that wall before mom and daddy gets home. Oh, Jesus, heal that wall before mom and daddy gets home. We, I'd get a good check every few seconds to see if that wall, that wall was patched up. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, heal that wall. Heal that wall. When they came in, saw my little brother with the Bible upside down, and me praying they couldn't eat spankers. <laughs> my, but my older brother was so disappointed. He, he thought he had us really for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, but when people don't know that the grace is available, and God's, they, won't, they won't come to God. They'll run from God. They'll go hide from God. Now, you've seen kids throw a rock and hit a window and break it. What do they do? They don't come walking out going, I threw the rock and I broke it. Because why? They think they are toast. They'll go hide. They'll go hide for days. People be looking for him. You know, I mean, <laughs> they'll walk around by and that kid's behind because he knows his back end is tore up. Or at least he thinks he does. And then when they finally find him, all they, oh, we just care. Oh, we care about you. Okay, the one that can be replaced. You know, you know the, you know the deal. But they're, by, they're insecure about that position because they've missed it. Now, Sunshine, I know what you think. I'm going to wear you out. Then I'll forgive you. I can see it all over your face. Huh? There's nowhere to hide. The sunshine won't find you. Hallelujah. So sunshine is a concept that most people have of God. <laughs> I'm going to get you for that. All right. But that's that when, when, we, when we get into that place, an insecurity overtakes us about our relationship. Adam demonstrated that in the garden when he sinned and God came down the cool of the day. I'm just teasing on you, sunshine. Don't take it personal. But you were just sitting back there and you don't care because you, you know what you would do. All right. I get him. Hallelujah. Um, Adam hid himself from the presence of God. He, he, his, in, his, his relationship with God became an insecure relationship. But when you know God's forgiveness is available, he said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly. He didn't say, don't go cower, don't go hide. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may find help. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So insecurity will overtake you if you don't renew your mind. Failure um, will overtake you. You'll begin to. You, I've seen people deliberately, without con not conscientiously, but deliberately, short circuit their success. They're afraid of success. They're afraid they won't make it. So instead of challenging themselves to succeed, they will fail to avoid failure. <laughs> Does that make sense? They will fail so they don't have to fail. Well, that's, 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 that's crazy. See, when you renew your mind to the word of God, know that you're the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath, that you always, you know, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Everything about the word of God is, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's lots and lots of scriptures about victory, but the person who's not renewing their mind to the word of God sets himself up for um, self-destruction or, or, or own, own uh, purpose to failure without even realizing they're doing it. Because they're not renewing their mind to the word of God, who they are in Christ. Um, they will also walk in shame. Romans 9.33 says, As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block and a rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But when you don't renew your mind to the word of God, whenever you make a mistake, you, you, um, I talk to Christians, they're so ashamed. They're so ashamed. But God loves you. Well, I'm doing this. I can't come back to God. What I did was just so wrong, so bad. We had a case where a couple years ago, somebody that we knew put a bullet in their head. Tried to kill himself. Well, just a little over a year ago. It just, they've been in and out Christians their whole life. You know? You talk to them, they love the Lord. But they're so controlled by the flesh, they don't know what to do. And got, and, and got to drinking and stuff and put a bullet, took a gun out and put it in their head and shot it and didn't kill them. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Matter of fact, they're just about 100% normal now. Really? Yeah. Got a little use, lack of one of their extremities, they don't have full use of. I, mean, I went to the hospital and prayed with them, you know. And, they were, and in the state they were in, they remember me coming up, vaguely back, they remember me coming up to visit with them. And um, so understand, you can get to the place where you get so ashamed of where you are because you're not renewing your mind to the Word of God. You know, when you, when you understand God loves you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, see, and whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. When you understand that God will hide and cover and cleanse your shame from you. Okay. Amen. His, his words renews you and, and, and gives you that information. But you can't act on what you don't know. It is impossible to act on information you don't have. How many, you know, uh, insider trading is illegal for, for the very reason that people get information that nobody else gets, and they get extremely rich off of insider trading, although it's not illegal for Congress to do it. Did y'all know that? <laughs> yeah. How many know that? Yeah. Congress can do illegal, can do what you can't do. They can have information about trades and information about companies that are getting ready and use that information to go buy stock or sell stock or whatever, and it's not illegal. But if you get that same information, it's called insider trading, and it's illegal. Hmm. Just thought you'd like to know that. They passed laws to protect themselves from those laws. Something's wrong with that. They're using their position of power to get rich. And if you do the same thing, you go to jail, huh? And the president approved it, and the Supreme Court didn't object. There you go. Sorry, free, free legs. Yep, I, I agree. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not right. It should not be that, that the people like that can get away with it, and you can't. You shouldn't be able to get away with it. They shouldn't be able to get away with it. You shouldn't. All right? Inside trading. Oh, and, and the inside information. But if you, you know, if all people have that information, they go get rich. If they had the same information, they'd act on it. And the thing about the Bible is if you don't have the information that it provides for you, you can't act on it. God wants you to act on his word. Once you renew your mind to this word. But a lot of people are living in shame, living in absolute shame because they don't know God loves them. God has a plan of restoration. Jesus Christ, 1 John chapter 1 is written to the believer. I don't care what anybody says. Amen. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Uh, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. Yeah. And if any man sin, it did not say it's okay, don't worry about it. No, it says we have an advocate. In other words, if you do sin, you don't have to be ashamed. You can come and receive forgiveness. 
I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a perpetuation for our sins. And not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. There you go. There you go. He's not talk, he's, he, obviously, he's not talking to the world. He would have said, not for the sins of the world only, but ours also. He says, for the, not for our sins, but only our sins, but the sins of the world. All right? But notice it says here, you know, that he is our perpetuation for us. See, if you have to understand that when you miss the mark in your sin, and, you renew, and your mind's renewed to the word of God, and you made, yeah, you, you sinned, you messed up. How many messed up? Since you've been saved. How many royally messed up? <laughs> How many done stuff that you wouldn't want anybody to find out you've done? All right. How many thought stuff you don't want anybody to know that you're thinking? Yeah, Sunshine. I was waiting for Sunshine to get her hand up. <laughs> I like to pick on Sunshine. She's a, she's this little, uh, the, the Triumph Company got the name first, but Spitfire is how I describe her. <laughs> wouldn't you, Carrie? Huh? Uh-huh. Yep. When you know that God loves you and that God will forgive you and says you can come to the throne of grace and that Jesus is our, is our intercessor and he's a perpetuation, we have, he's our advocate, then you can get out of the shame and get forgiven and walk in that forgiveness and restoration. Amen? Um, the, another thing that happens is we enter into discouragement. Joshua 1.8. Actually, Joshua 1 9, we've already quoted 1 8. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. And remember on the heels of verse 8, where it says, This book of law shall not depart out of your mouth, he commands them, Don't be discouraged. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. See, when you're not renewing your mind to the Word of God, it's so easy to become discouraged. God's word is a light unto your path and a lamp unto your feet. God's word gives you the words of encouragement. God's word it lifts you up. God's word puts in you the things you need to, to live above the fray. But if you don't have that mind renewed to the word of God, discouragement can set in on you. You can feel like you're the only one. There's nobody but me. You, you know, you could be the author of the uh, Eat Some Worms song. <laughs> nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Think I'll eat some worms. Like that's going to fix your troubles. <laughs> Even if you put chocolate on them, it ain't going to fix it. Hello? Y'all here? You're going home. How many are here? Here. All right. So discouragement can set in when you're not renewing your mind to the word of God. Why? Because the only source of true encouragement comes from the Bible. He's the glory and the lifter of your head. He's your buckler. He's your shield. He's your strong tower in the battle. Hallelujah. He's your re-reward. Hallelujah. I mean, he, I mean, are you here? I mean, we start looking into there, you can see that in the midst of the battle, there is one who has already gone before you and set ambushments against the enemy, praise God. There is one who will come to your defense and then bring you out with a strong arm of righteousness, praise God. But if you don't know that, you can become discouraged. Remember when you look at the, some of the prophets in the Old Testament, they would get discouraged. Remember, Elijah got very discouraged. See, your spiritual victories don't produce, uh, don't uh, avoid discouragement. God's word, the light of his word will keep you out of discouragement. Now, Elijah went out and called fire down out of heaven, licked up the stones, licked up the water, took up the sacrifice. He took out one sword, killed 450 of Baal's prophets. All of them. I mean, he looked like Darth Maul in action. I mean, he took them out, baby. I mean, boom. And then Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you by noon tomorrow. And he runs off and hides in a cave. <laughs> See, we think if we have a good Holy Ghost service or we have a good encounter with God in prayer, we're not going to face discouragement. And the truth of the matter is, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. The courage and the, and the ability to, to withstand and resist discouragement comes from God's word. Battles won are battles won. But the daily application of the meditation of the word of God fends off discouragement in a way that nothing else will. Y'all here, you going home. Are y'all y'all kind of had a surrounding issue here? Or are y'all <laughs> y'all with me? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Just trying to kind of read you a little bit. Because I can actually see y'all. Sometimes y'all so far back in the church, I can't see you. Got people who hide out at the back. We'll take all the chairs out except the front row. <laughs> and then when people fill up the front row, I'm going to bring in another row. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Get you close to me so I can see your beady eyeballs. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, discouragement can enter in. Um, and you'll begin to see God's in God in different ways. You'll see God as angry. Psalm 35 says, For his anger endureth but a moment, but his favor is life. Weeping but it may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. See, we, we get, we, we've heard, how many grew up here thinking about the angry God? Not angry bird, angry God. Angry bird, <laughs> some new video game or something. <laughs> or a video phone game or some app on the phone or something. Angry bird app. Isn't that what it is? Angry birds. Angry birds. Well, okay. well didn't uh, um, Alfred Hitchcock have that? On the scene before they, yeah. they showed up, yeah. I even remember the birds. Yeah. Yep. I watched that a couple of years ago for the first time in years. Thought Hitchcock was good. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you know for his anger endureth how but a moment. God loves you. Even when you sin, He loves you. And that that's something that only can come from revelation from the Word of God. Is to know that God loves you even in the midst of you missing the mark of sinning. You know, the Bible talks about that there be, there'll be uh, tears of heaven be wiped away. I honestly believe that the tears wiped away of heaven will not be that of men, but that of God, of the people he loved and sent Jesus to die for, who rejected him and did not make heaven, will, will cause him to weep for their lost eternal souls or spirits. That's just a personal belief. Um, when you don't renew your mind to the word of God, you begin to see God as judgmental. Um, henceforth, there's led it for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge. Now, understand, God's judgments are always righteous. <clears throat> God's judgments are not judgments of anger. God's judgments are judgments of righteousness. You know, when you, are, when you remove emotion from the law, then the law becomes, you know, then, then who is applying the law it doesn't mean that person is judgmental. They're just applying up the law. You know, we, we try to make it, you know, the person doing the, how many of you have ever seen it, you know, uh, somebody gets in trouble because somebody told them, told, you know, somebody says, who did such and such? Well, so-and-so did it. And you tattletale. Everybody says, oh, they're a tattletale. They, t they got me in trouble. No, 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 no. If you hadn't done what you did, you wouldn't have gotten in trouble. God is not judgmental. There's a difference between judging righteously and being judgmental. Judgmental is, is an assumption-based perception of a judgment. In other words, you assume that because somebody is in a certain state that they've done such and such, that's judgmental. So you don't renew your mind to the word of God. You don't know the character of God. God doesn't judge you based on he walks into the scene and sees you uh, afraid and, you know, uh, clothes ripped and thinking that you're some criminal who just broke out of prison. Okay? I mean, now we do. We see somebody, you're at the gas station, somebody walks up with, you know, you know, ragged old clothes on, a backpack on, with a sign hanging on the side that says, we'll work for food, and you think they're going to rob you. But I, don't, I, don't say, I don't say don't be careful. But, you know, that's, that, is not a, that is not righteous judgment. That isn't judgmental. You have based that on an assumption that because of that state, and, and you know, and I understand, I understand experience tells us to be careful. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying don't be careful. I'm just trying to give you a point of understanding how that, that process works. It's not, God doesn't operate that way. God doesn't look at a circumstance and judgmentalness comes. If any judgments are made, they are righteous judgments based on what his word says. And because of that, because his judgments are righteous judgments, then his remedies are righteous remedies. If you have sinned, we have an advocate with the Father. So his righteous judgment says that was wrong, but... Jesus is your advocate, and therefore there is a righteous remedy to this judgment. Judgmental is opinion. Judgment, righteous judgment, is law-based or word-based. Thus, there is a word remedy. Praise God. That if you will repent and ask God to forgive you, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. Well, that's good to know. That's good information to have. God's not, you know, we kind of get this idea God's just waiting for us to do something that looks like we've made a mistake so he can zap us. Psst. Don't look at the light. I can't. It's so beautiful. Psst. Bugs, Bugs Life. Remember that? <laughs> Bugs Story, Bugs Life, whatever it was, the, one, the first one. Don't look at the light. I can't help it. <laughs> Some of y'all seen, have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. 
Benny, you hadn't seen that? Boy, you've missed it. It's a Disney animated. Hallelujah. So God's not judgmental. God is, God is the righteous judge. But because his judgments are righteous, think about this now. Because he's not judgmental, he's ju his judgments are righteous. That when you come to him, right beside him is our advocate. It all becomes legal. And he goes, you've done this. I judge you in, in sin over this. But Jesus said, but I shed my blood to cover that sin. And you say, thank you, Lord, for, me, for forgiving me because you're my advocate. And the Father says, he doesn't, he doesn't go, no, 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 I think he's, he goes, oh. it's, it's righteous judgment, it's righteous remedy. Praise the Lord. Amen. It takes, it takes opinion or assumption out of it, and it becomes very legal. God's not judgmental. He does righteously judge. But in his righteous judgment, there is righteous forgiveness or righteous remedy. Amen. All right. First, the devil renew their minds to the word of God. We'll see God as an impersonal God. Uh, but Jesus said in John 16, 27, for God himself loveth you. See, we hear, we hear terms like the man upstairs or the big guy right. or God. You know, the great cosmic cloud, the great force. You know, get real, real wacky and get cosmic humanists, the inner God. There's some Looney Tunes there. But anyway. But he says, for the Father himself. Remember, Jesus came and said, the Father himself loveth you. He's a personal God. When you don't renew your mind to the word of God and don't get to know the Father through the word, you will not see him as personal, intimately involved in your life. He'll be the Wizard of Oz running all the stuff behind some smoke screen and machine thing. He's just running it back there and very impersonal. I thought about that because the Wizard of Oz was on the past weekend on some channel. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, the Father himself loveth you. Because you've loved me and have believed that I came out of God. The Father loves you. He is a personal God. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, next you'll see him as uncaring. Peter, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself there, um, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all his care upon him. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God cares for you. He's not an uncaring God. Now, <clears throat> because we don't know how, we don't, a lot of people don't renew their mind to the word of God. And a lot of people don't know who God is and what God, how God operates and functions in accordance with his word. Then they're, they, they say, why God, doesn't God do such as? Well, you're not meeting certain conditions. You're not doing according to faith. You're not living by faith. You're not, you're not believing you receive. You're not doing what the word of God tells you to do because you haven't renewed your mind to the word. And because you're not acting on the word and getting the results from the word, then you begin to look at God and say he's uncaring because he's not doing, I want him to do such and such. Amen. Well, I may want to be in my car right now, but if I don't get it and walk to it, I ain't getting there. If I don't, you, you know, unless you pick me up and carry me, nobody wants to do that tonight. <laughs> All right? Put me on the cart and roll me out there. Who's going to drag me in? <laughs> you know, um, if you don't approach the things of God the way God says approach them, you're not going to get them. And because some people don't renew their mind to the word, find out how God's, the conditions God says to live by, which is by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. They that come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Then we don't meet on the condition of faith. We don't get the answers. And if you're just kind of going around saying, well, if God really cared, he would do such and such. You're, no, 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 no. You're doing it on the basis of your opinion. God's already written out what to do. He's, if you read the book, it's kind of like getting a new TV set, setting it up, plugging it in, having the remote, not putting the batteries in it because you didn't read the instructions. Just start pressing the button. This thing don't work. Well, I'm pressing the button. It's supposed to work. If I press that red button, then you put the batteries in. I don't have to put batteries in it. Why? Because I don't think I should have to put batteries in it. Well, it doesn't matter. If you read the instructions, well, the first thing it tells you to do is to open up the remote and stick the batteries in it. And it tells you how to put the batteries in it. One one way and one the other. Unless it's the stack, unless you're stacking. You know, if you've got, if you've got a reverse side by side, they're, they're reverse. So the current flows through them. They're stacking, they go in one, the same direction. But uh, you, and you can only find that out by reading what? The instructions. Now, if you think you can put the two that are stacked on top of each other, opposite directions, and it's going to work, guess what? It ain't going to work. It won't work. Well, I just think it should, I, just, I believe that that's how it's supposed to work. Well, just because you believe that don't make it so. And there's a lot of people running around saying, well, I just believe God. Well, that don't make it so. Just because you believe, don't make it so. Y'all hear? That doesn't make it so. 
That doesn't make it happen that way just because you believe it should be that way. That's not how it works. There, there are, there's, there's other, other issues involved. Number one is doing the way God said do it. So if you're thinking he's uncaring simply because you haven't found out how he operates and how you're to approach him doesn't make him uncaring. It makes you uh, ignorant of the word of God. We need to renew our mind to the word. Okay? Uh, some people begin to think God's unapproachable. I can't come to God. God's, you know, he's too busy with Copeland. He's too busy with Creflo. He's too busy with Oral. He's too busy with, uh, you know, whoever. Joel. He's too busy with whoever. You know, Pastor Ed's got, got God too busy this week trying to fix the flood stuff. <laughs> I, I, I'm not changing my name to Noah. I can tell you that. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's not unapproachable. He Ephesians 2.6 says, We were raised up together, made to sit together in heaven places in Christ Jesus. We're seated with him, uh, with the Lord right beside the Father. But he's not unapproachable. He said, Come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen? The, the consequence of all of this is a failure to grow spiritually. 1 Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If you do not renew your mind to the word of God, you will not grow. Some Christians live and die as baby Christians because they don't renew their mind to the word of God. They love the Lord. They live in failure, defeat, insecurity, condemnation. Uh, anger, they think God's angry at them, that God doesn't care for them, that God's, they can't get to God, that he's ready to whack them. Let me tell you something. God wanted to take you out. You done been gone. I'm just telling you. If God wanted to take you out, you done been gone. You know here? If that was his motive, if that was he was if he, if that was what he was after, we'd have done put flowers on Benny's casket years ago. <laughs> Hello. All right. So the failure to grow. If you don't renew your mind to the word of God, you won't grow. You will live in defeat. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove is that good, perfect, and acceptable and perfect will of God. The world is a failed system. The world is a failed system. There is no ultimate victory in the earth. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how many goods you possess. Without a relationship with the Father God through the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a defeated individual. There is no victory for your life. Now, you may be able to placate your emotions, placate your soul, but it is a temporary um, event. Renewing your mind to the word of God as a Christian. Now, John, Paul says here, that if you don't, you know, Kenya, Kenya said it, but I'll, I said it this way, I'm, I'm going to say it this way, and I'll say what Kenya says. Paul says, renew your mind so you won't be conformed to the world. Kenyon used to say, and in his writings, you can go still read it, he says, a Christian who does not renew his mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, why, 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 why do you get that right here? Be not conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do you mean? Don't be conformed to the world. If you don't renew your mind to the word of God, you will be conformed to the world. And that means you'll imitate sinners. Right. You'll act like they act. You'll respond like they respond. You, you, got, you got Facebook friends. If you're on Facebook, you got Facebook friends. You got Facebook friends that you know, were, were uh, in our church at one time. And you read some of the stuff they put on the Internet, and you think, dear God, shut them up. <laughs> Get relatives putting stuff out there, and you think, oh, Lord, stop them, Lord, stop them. <laughs> Crash their computer or something. Burn up their smartphone because some of the stuff they say. Hello? You, you know their mind's not renewed to the Word of God. You know they serve the Lord. They've been born again, filled with the Spirit, walked in some places with God, but they, they backslid, not walked with God, mind's not renewed, and Lululand stuff comes out. I mean, what? And they start acting like the world. That's right. They think they need a glass of wine or, or some Jack Daniels or whatever to get over the trouble they're going through instead of praying in the Holy Ghost. They think 
you know, and like a heathen will help them uh, feel better. One of the things going to make them feel better is walking with the Lord. Right. You're not going to feel. You might feel better overnight when you get drunk, but you will feel it in the morning. You wake up the next day and say, "Dear God, how big is my head? Can somebody put a tape measure on it? Are you here? I feel like I got King Kong's head on um, Tweety Bird. There you go, Tweety Bird body." I hadn't thought of it that way. There you go. Amen. Great big old hell and that little bitty body. I mean, you know, the answers are not there. The answers are in the word of God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Be not conformed to the world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't have to be conformed to the world. You don't have to live in all those things we've talked about. You can live above the fray by walking with a renewed mind in the Word of God, feeding on God's Word, letting God's Word speak to you about who you are in Christ, what you possess in Christ, where you're headed in Christ, what He's done for you, what He's planned for you. What He's done for you was your past. What He's planned for you is your future. And who you are is your present. You will walk in more. When you renew your mind to the word of God, you will walk in more. And you will walk in more. And you will walk in more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you that you your minister life to our, to our people tonight. Thank you that they're blessed. Thank you that they have a, a, a desire to renew their minds to the word of God, especially after tonight's message. And I thank you they'll walk in it. They'll do it. And they'll be diligent to it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.